What's feeling like you guys back uh, back in here and getting ready for uh, game week now? Um, feeling great, you know, ready to get to it. Um, you know, ready to play football and ready for it to count. So, you know, we're ready to get started. Past experience, being able to run the football really good on the road, a hostile environment. How much does that help, you know, control the football game and set the tone that you want to set? Um, that's major for a team, especially being on the road. Um, you know, just trying to control the atmosphere a little bit, you know, with the run game. And, you know, it just, the energy from the run game, it just bleeds through the team and, and it just goes to the defense, to the offense, and carry on from there. Have a, a gauge on that atmosphere given that it's week one. It's going to be probably a, a bit of a buzzsaw in there for that team. Um, I mean, it's, it's important for us to be ready for whatever it comes with the territory. But at the end of the day, we're focused on us, um, what we have to do to go in there and, and come out with the win. So that's that's what we're locked into. A lot of coaches have a really long play sheet. Brian <clears throat> talked about his being kind of more more compact. Does that influence or have a bearing on you guys? Like, is there a little bit less to digest in a, in a week, you think, because he concentrates on, on not having a, a, a sheet that goes down to his knees? Um, definitely. You know, just, just allowing the players to be more freely out there and just not think as much and, you know, just, just for things to be second nature and just go out there and play and be natural. There's so many new parts and new pieces on this offense. What's the key to making sure everybody is kind of playing cohesively together and, you know, not having silly mistakes and things like that and missed assignments? Um, going out there and um, just being prepared, you know, um, falling to the level of our preparation that we've been, you know, preparing it all week, all camp, and um, just, just going out there and being ourselves and not trying to do too much, not trying to, you know, be somebody that we're not just playing our game. A, a lot of new faces in a way on that offensive line, or at least moving pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the comfort level with that group uh, as you get ready for this game? And is there enough chemistry to, w between the running backs and, and those guys to, to to know when to hit the hole? Um, I would say right now we're extremely comfortable. Um, we got a, a great feel for each other. Um, the O-line has a great feel for how the different runners run the ball. And, you know, we have a great feel for how our O-line works together. and you know, how they block certain movements and certain looks and how certain guys double teams and little things like that. So I feel like we're pretty good as far as chemistry and where we're at. Going back to the O-line, where, where is the, the biggest area of growth you've seen from them collectively as, they, as you guys have worked through the preseason training camps? Um, I mean, just, just every day watching old guys grow, um, being over there with a guy like Bill every day working. You know, you see those guys getting better. Um, you see the improvements, like, overall throughout the whole entire line. Um, you know, guys just being more locked in, being like the fine details of things, being more, you know, locked into those things like that. How much extra juice was there in this building when you guys <clears> walked in this morning after having two days off and knowing what's ahead this week? Um, I mean, it was, it wasn't just too big of a difference, but every, you can tell everybody's ready to play. You know, they're ready to play football and for it to count. And, you know, um, you know, just ready to get to it and show what we've been doing our off season. What, what kind of things do you learn about a team in week one? Um, you learn how they start, how they start the season off. Um, are they going to have a sluggish start? Are they going to start out hot? Um, you figure out, you know, who may be some of your go-to players early on and, um, what guys the quarterback is most comfortable with and, you know, just, just little things like that. How much growth have you seen in Will as a leader just from the start of the off season to now that we're ready to start the regular season? Um, I mean, it's, it's huge just, and it's, it's hard to judge it. It's, it's little small things, just the way that he carries himself around the building. Um, you know, the, just talking, just keeping in touch with all the guys on offense. Um, you know, just building a little relationship with guys, different, different guys on the team. And, you know, just over time seeing it grow and him get more comfortable in his role. You've seen a lot of teams win free agency in March, spend a lot of money, bring in a lot of guys. and. Traditionally, that team isn't isn't the team in January that everybody's talking about. What makes this team, that was one of the big free agency winners in March, different? Um, I mean, we work, we go out there every day, we compete. Um, you got good on good, and you got you know guys from different different areas around the league coming from different teams, ready to show what they can do and what they can bring. So it just makes com it makes practice competitive, and and it feels like we're getting better every day. Seems like the entire NFL world is picking against you guys this weekend, this season. Are you a guy who uses that or, or no? Um, I really don't pay much attention to it. Um, I'm locked on to what's going on in this building. 
And, um, you know, just keeping the main thing, the main thing, going out there winning games. What did you think? Well, you, you were one of the first guys that came aboard and then a lot of moves since you got here. What, what's it been like kind of watching this team build um, as you now being a part of it? Uh, I've been enjoying it, you know, just, just seeing the new faces come along as we've kept going throughout the offseason and growing. And, um, you know, just, just bonding with different guys, seeing that chemistry come together and just, you know, just seeing the pieces come together all at once. What's it feel like, Tajay, before you got here? And what have you, what have you kind of thought about now being his teammate? Um, I knew he was a great, you know, elusive back, you know, a guy that can make people miss, um, a guy that you want in open field to, you know, get the ball in his hands and make people miss and make plays. I knew that coming out of college. And, um, you know, after watching his, his past season, you know, it just – it shows everything that I thought he was. You know, it's proven in the league so far. How did you take the field in that new uniform for the first time this week? And what, what are you hoping for with this chapter of your career as it begins? Um, man, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, I'm just, you know, blessed to be able to do what I do for a living. Um, I attack every day humbly and, um, you know, just, just work for everything. So that's our whole mindset for the team. You know, we. The way we attack practice, the way we go day by day, we just grind and we go out there and get it. Your numbers throughout your career get much better in the fourth quarter of games. Do you believe in the idea of momentum as a running back? And if so, how do you gain momentum splitting touches, carries with a guy like Tajay? Over the course um, of the momentum is, is huge in the game. Um, you know, just getting the fans involved, you know, getting the sidelines involved and, and getting that energy going throughout the stadium. You know, that momentum is real. And, um, you know, with, with two backs in the game and, and having that momentum, you just have to control what you can control and, you know, be ready for the opportunity. When the opportunity comes, make the most of it and, you know, just go from there. Do you like having the chance to, like, get a couple carries that maybe don't go anywhere, get ready to, like, break the big one? Or, like, does that opportunity to come in with fresh legs present, like, a more fortuitous position for you? Um, I mean, I like, I'm definitely liking the situation that we're in right now. Um, have two great backs, you know, guys that can come in and, you know, have the defenses on their toes. There's no drop off. And um, it just, it keeps your, keeps your legs fresh and it, it gives you a long career. So I'm all for it. Okay, so you talked about free agents coming in with, with something to, to prove on a new team. What, what, what have you wanted to prove here? What, what, what's kind of your motivation this year? Um, I mean, just prove everybody right that believed in me. Um, all the people that, that knew I could be where I am today and, you know, the people that still cheer for me and, you know, on my side and, and rooting for me just to, you know, prove those people right, you know, get old guys something to cheer for. Montez Sweat led two teams in sacks last year. You're known as a good pass protector. How big is, is that assignment for you this week? Oh, uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a major part of our um, game plan this week, you know, uh, minimizing those guys on the edge. And, you know, I'm um, trying to keep those guys from making as many plays as we can. We've clearly seen, you know, what it takes for a quarterback to be a leader, having experience with Dak uh, Prescott. What are some early things that you've seen from Levis to make you feel like, you know, he, he could be the leader of this team? Um, you know, just the way he attacks every day, uh, the way he goes out there and works. Um, he's a grit grind type of guy. You know, um, he's going to lead by example. He's going to get out there and show you how, how he's doing it and, then you can you can look and learn from that rather than telling you how to do something or explaining to you what you should be doing and, and him not doing the same on his end. Have you got a chance to make your way into into his office, that, that quarterback room? Uh, I haven't I haven't made my way that far, no. Nah. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, just per, I think as, as we get into the regular season mode, just for you guys, as I, especially as being a bonus day, normally we won't have this type of practice. We usually be coming off the game. I'll give you injury updates coming out of the game, just on who's who's where, um, but I won't give any today. We'll, injury report will come out Wednesday, and, and we'll see it from there. So um, that's how I'll handle this today. And then again, normal Mondays will be whatever happened in the game. We'll we'll kind of confirm whatever we did post game, and then injury report will be Wednesday. Um, but excited to get going. It's uh, beginning of week one, and get the guys back running around after most of them are probably out of their uh, college. Uh, alma maters watching their teams play, but get everybody back and ready to roll and uh, back focused. And then we'll hit our normal rhythm of the week, which Tuesday will be our off day. And then we'll start our normal practice regimen Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and walk through Saturday and leave uh, for Chicago Saturday afternoon. So um, couldn't be more excited. There's a little bit of, a little bit more excitement, a little more butterflies than uh, maybe I would have thought, but um, excited to get the plan put together and, and get ready to roll. Game plan, particularly 
these early weeks where you don't have film to, to go off. How much are you reacting to, to stuff that you see them line up in, mm -hmm. and how much are you trying to dictate? Um, I think there's, you know, with a team that's got some continuity, you know, obviously they've, they've had the same defensive coordinator there. Uh, Matt Abertus has called the plays on defense, and so you get an idea of who they were over the course of an entire season. Uh, really, really good defense. Um, second half of the year, they were, they were outstanding, um, particularly against the run. Um, they turned the ball over a bunch. So you see a lot of the things that what they want to be. They've added more players um, this this go around. So we got a this tough challenge ahead of us. Um, but we try to still stay true to who and what we are while having a handful of game plan things that we need that we think will uh, be good additions for the game plan. So it's a little bit of both uh, That's probably the best way to say it. Uh, but I think that you still have to figure out who your team is too. So we're, we're also trying to discover more about our team in, in regular season work about your call sheet being mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more compact than some other guys have. Is part of that too having your guys more concentrated on mm -hmm. less? Yes, I think there's uh, the issue, the biggest issue is always can you practice it all? You know, you, can, you don't have enough practice reps to get it all. You can't rep 75 plays or 150 plays depending on what you have but um, we'll have enough we'll have enough uh, ammo uh, for the game but I, I generally believe in being able to execute what you have at a high level too so um, it's probably a little more manageable than some um, maybe some consistent with others but uh, prefer to be able to go execute and play fast well, that's has been pointed to the passing game you know with Ridley Boyd being added but how much is the importance for you in maintaining that running the, the football style, especially opening on the road in a hostile environment? Well, anytime you can, anytime you can run the ball effectively, um, you're gonna you're gonna help your help your team on the road. You're gonna help your quarterback on the road. Um, you settle the front down a bit. You know, you, you don't want it to necessarily turn into a, a pass rush clinic for for either side, but. Um, yeah, that's a huge part of, of marrying everything up together as far as all the action game goes and making sure the defense doesn't know exactly what's what's coming at them either. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that that we run the ball, you know, well. I think that that's something that um, we're gonna pride ourselves on is being able to, to run it and run it well. Obviously, a lot of unknowns going into week one, but what you do know about them, what what are maybe some of the biggest challenges you face uh, broadly? Just going into a going into the air and facing that team with, with some of the players they have. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of momentum for them. Um, obviously got a lot of really exciting players there. Um, you know, I've, I'm a huge fan of, of Caleb Williams and what he did at, at USC. I've watched him over the years and a uh, really dynamic player. Um, really fun as a, as a fan of quarterbacks to watch him play. Um, but then they've added a bunch of weapons. I mean, they got, uh, you know, Keenan Allen's been doing this for a long time. Uh, he's, he's still able to get open at a at a relatively high rate these days. And um, obviously with DJ Moore and then drafting Roma Dunze, they've, they've got some real players on offense and ability to score a lot of points. Um, they got good backs. They got good tight end. I mean, it's it's a much improved football team. Um, and on defense, again, just what they did last year to close the season out was incredibly impressive. So um, I think they're going to be a really good football team this year. I think we got our work cut out for us. It's going to be a tough test uh, on the road. And so we're going to need everybody and everything to, to to muster up enough to go to go give these guys a you know give these guys a game. So they're they're really good, and I'm excited to go play them. Um, you know, you try to watch him play NFL football as best you can. Obviously, he played just a little bit in the preseason. Um, you know, I don't know that hard knocks give you a whole lot. I know that's out there, but uh, I just think you have to go off of what type of player he is, the caliber of quarterback he's been over his career. And you saw glimpses of it in the preseason. I mean, he can make uh, off schedule plays. He can stand in there and deliver balls. I mean, he's he's everything at a number one pick you would expect to be and so you have to treat him as such and treat him with that kind of respect obviously you have to earn that in this league um, he's got to do it in regular season games i just hope it isn't in the first week a lot of evidence that free agency winners in march and april mm -hmm. are not necessarily big winners in december mm -hmm. and january this franchise has been very fond of of saying that in mm -hmm. historically What's different about this team being a big free agent winner this year in terms of how that's going to play out? Um, I think it was because I think we added quality players at a lot of positions. Um, you know, I don't know that we we went out and did anything like it didn't feel crazy. I know it was a lot of money overall, but we had a lot of uh, roster patchwork to, to make do with. And so 
I don't look at it necessarily maybe as winning free agency. I think we made our team better. Um, and I think we have a, a young players in core spots too that are really important. Um, and so it's going to be a mesh of those two things, but I don't, I don't look at it as a, as a winning or losing free agency. I just, I think we made our team better. Um, it's going to give us a chance to be competitive. Part of the unknowns though that you've got is that secondary, uh, you, you know, the management plan, the injury to Cheeto. Uh, now that they, you know, they, they've all talked about how they've done walkthroughs together, meetings. Uh, how much of a leap is it though, even with their experience, to make that translate onto the field Sunday? Uh, yeah, there's a leap. There's just certainly not. Um, uh, it's not what you would would plan on if you had a perfect world, but but I know what those two guys are made of, particularly Lejarius and Cheeto. I've seen them play. I've seen Lejarius play really really good football. He looks great now. Um, I know what Cheeto's capable of, so I know the what the pieces are capable of. And then there's going to come a part of playing together that we're going to have to grow as we go, and that's just part of uh, having as many new players as we have and new coaches as we have. So uh, the process will be ongoing for us. I don't think it ever stops. Um, but I, I'm very confident in what those, especially those two people, uh, what they've done and how they go about their work, that um, I'm not worried about their level of play, but certainly the group as a whole um, is going to need to grow together. So the plan that you have with Jerry is on, does anything significant change now that you're officially into the regular season and this is kind of what the ramp up is for? Yeah, he, he returns to pretty normal practice process. You know, there's not a whole lot different. He's, he's going to participate in the week like every other player would. Um, you know, and maybe on a on a Thursday, you manage him just a bit to make sure he stays fresh. But other than that, um, he's he's pretty much in the normal normal rhythm of the week. So much building I'll come in back. the last you know, seven or eight months. Now that you finally come to game week, how do you balance still kind of building and putting your imprint versus we got a game to go play and win on Sunday? Uh, you do both. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, we're in a we're in a production business and a winning business, and 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 the the goal and the idea of the plan is to to go put one together that can go win, and and we expect to go win, and um, there's really no other way to do it. And then you build the rest of it as you go, and it's it's a process that you live and learn. Um, guys grow, their communication gets better every time they play together. Uh, the more mistakes you have to fix, the usually that means you're growing every time you're getting in the film room. So. Um, it's a, it's, it's kind of two processes that like run congruently together. We're, we're trying to win games and putting a plan together to go win, and we're still trying to build our football team um, and build the type of team that we want to be. So uh, they have to, they both processes are working at the same time. How much of a challenge does the Bears' pass rush present, especially out on the edges with mm -hmm. JC and Nick? Um, yeah, they're they're really good. Um, it's a it's a it's a good. We got young tackles that that have played. Obviously, JC's not played yet, and Nick's played just a little bit. Um, yeah, we got our hands full. Um, that's a that's that'll be a challenge. Um, that's a really good front. Um, <clears throat> I know if just from the past of of the types of defenses that that Coach Eberflus has been a part of. Um, I know their D line coach personally very well. I know how he coaches. Um, I know I know what they what they want from that group, and um, it's it's a hard playing, talented. Um, challenging group to go play against. And then you add the two linebackers in there who I think are probably as good as two interior inside linebackers in football, and, and you got a pretty good front to deal with. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, they're a good football team. And, and I, think the, I think the hype and the, and the excitement around that team is real, I think, because of those things. And um, the growth that they've shown there over their, their tenure um, has been really impressive. So, um, yeah, we got, we got our hands full both up front uh, and in the secondary. Quarterback, your running backs, and tight second. ends to be a part of, of that. Pass One more time. How critical is it for your running backs and tight ends to be a part of that pass protection this week? Yeah, it's it's they're a huge part of it. You know they they have to be able to help. We got to help on the edges. We need to help on the edges. You know we don't we don't love just leaving guys one on one all game anyway. So that's all part of the a plan when you're playing against rushers that they have. Um, the backs are be involved in that. You know they get a chance to, to to lay a chip or two on when they get a chance, and then. Um, they also play a role in, in how quickly they can get out and get open on top of it. So uh, it's a all of that's going to factor in, and, and they they're going to play a huge role in that process. With a young quarterback like Caleb Williams, you know the importance of attacking him and blitzing. How much is that something that you guys are considering as you, as you prepare for this game? Yeah, I think they're I think we're in the beginning stages of the plan, but uh, there's um, certainly things that that he's probably seen before, and some that he hasn't. Um, and you know, I think there's a there's an adage in football where you know you kind of 
you, you see things until you prove you can handle it. And I think that um, that's all part of putting a plan together for a young quarterback is um, making sure that they're not seeing it very clear. And whether that's pressure or coverage or shit or, or disguise, whatever that looks like uh, for us, it's, it's try to keep him as uh, off balance and uneasy as possible. And again, it doesn't mean just pressuring. That just means how we're handling um, our defensive structure in the game as well. So it's a, it's, it's a holistic approach, obviously, but um, you're, we're going to need all of it to, to go up to Chicago and win. How excited are you just to kind of see what this product looks like and with Will at the controls kind of running the offense? Well, I can't wait. Um, that's, that's that part. I'm, I can't wait to see what our team is. You know, I think we've, we've had glimpses of what I think we're capable of um, over the course of training camp in the preseason. And, and again, we haven't faced a, a starting NFL defense yet, and that's OK, other than our own and a little bit of Seattle. Um, but I do think that uh, that's the part that I'm looking forward to is to see what see what we are, and that's the exciting part about every season is you get a chance to learn. Uh, your team's going to grow, it's going to change, and that's the fun process. That's the journey part of it that I enjoy the most, and um, we got ourselves a, a journey ahead of us. There's no doubt. What have, from, what have you seen from Will that tells you he's ready for this moment? Uh, everything he's done so far, he's he's ready for the moment. There's no question in my mind. Um, he's going to have to play well for us, obviously, but um, just his, his demeanor, um, his confidence, um, his comfort with the offense, all of those things have shown that uh, he's ready to go play football. And uh, I can't wait to see it, and, and I'm excited for him, too, to be able to show people uh, how far he's come as well. So it's, it's exciting for, for both of us in that regard. With Pajay, we'll, go, we'll go back one yeah. more. Yeah. Ryan, back, back when you guys brought in Tony in, in free agency, was there a particular type – of running back you were looking for to fit this system and how, mm -hmm. how good a fit has he been for what you wanted? Um, perfect is probably the best way to put it. Between him and Tajay, um, they're exactly what we're looking for. They <clears throat> they have both have the ability to be kind of three-pronged players where um, they run it very, very well. They're very good in the pass game and they can protect and they do all three of those things at a very high level. And so I think we got two backs that, that I'm really excited to see and use. Uh, but they they fit exactly what we're looking for um, in this particular brand of offense, and uh, they both got explosive capabilities. They can both find lanes in the run game. They both run hard, even though they're not um, gigantic backs. They're big enough, um, and they they, they run uh, hard enough too. I guess is the best way to put it. They run with their pads behind them, and uh, it's it's a good group. And and they they're going to be a huge part of our offensive success is how well those guys fit into the system. And, and like I said, they're both about as good as I could ask for for a fit. The idea of a back kind of gaining momentum as the game goes on with more carries, and then how do you then approach that as a coach when you're trying to get both guys their touches and changing them in and out throughout the course of the game? Yeah, there's a, there's a game by game feel. Um, there's guys get hot sometimes, um, but yeah, there's there's style, there's definitely styles of backs that that need 20 plus carries and they get better as the game goes on. Um, that's that's not an abnormal uh, rhythm for some runners. Um, I don't think that our two runners need that in the same way because I think they're uh, they're both really explosive. Um, but yeah, let's say let's say a guy starts to get hot and he's feeling it. Well, we'll just let him keep rolling, and we'll find other spots for for the other guys to rotate. But um, they're still going to play both quite a bit, and you know I think they both know how to be a one-two punch on top of it. I think they both understand how that works and uh, how effective it can be, and both keeping them fresh over the course of 17 weeks and um, keeping a defense a little bit off balance as well. Were you full speed today? Yeah. Pads? No pads today, well, but full speed. Will one of your captains call heads, tails every game, or you kind of alternate? Uh... Um, you know, that's one, you know, Jim, you got me on that one. <laughs> I, I'm usually pretty prepared for questions, but I, 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 I I uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I'll probably let probably let Morgan do most of the conversating up there since uh, those special teams guys are pretty dialed in. So yeah, that's I, that. But the, he doesn't know that yet, so don't ask him. Yeah. Jim, who's going to select the uniform combo each week? Uh, the uniform combos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uniform combos are done uh, for the most part, I think. Uh, but that's a that's an Amy Amy decision. She gets to pick the uh, pick the uniforms. You brought up Will's demeanor. Just these yeah. last couple of weeks as the season's gotten closer, have you seen his intensity dial up a little bit, or is it kind of staying steady? I think uh, you guys are probably familiar with the you know like when you look at a duck on the water, like he's. I'm sure internally he's incredibly excited, but he's done a really good job of, of staying pretty consistent and calm in his approach. So <clears throat> I know Will well enough to know that he's very excited to go play. 
Um, but the key part of that too is, is managing those emotions. And that's both in the excitement and in, and when things go wrong is being able to stay consistent enough so you can, you can bounce back or um, continue on from, from a good play or a bad play, sort of in the same manner. And so he's really improved in that regard, I think, when you just watch him talk to people and you watch his interactions with people, he's a much more confident, um, calm, collected presence than maybe he's been. Um, but trust me, I, I know what's I know what's inside of the, of him, and and I'm sure it's it's his feet are moving as fast as hell under the water right now. So I know he's ready to roll. He's been here a few days now, and obviously, who's that? Ernest. Yep. And, and had the weekend to kind of get caught up practicing in his day. What does he have to show you or tell you to know that he's ready to go and be the guy on Sunday? Yeah, he's got to be ready to, to play. I think he's you know he's going to be he's going to be up and ready to roll on game day, and so. Um, his role will expand as, as quickly as as he expands it himself. I mean, he's going to have to learn a system. It's different than what he came from. Um, he's going to have to be – Denard's got to be confident in his ability to know what to do and when to do it. So uh, it'll be a process, but he's a pro, so I don't I don't uh, anticipate him taking too long. And he's been around, obviously, for a little bit of time now to, at the very least, get the basics down. Um, but there's a, a communication piece. There's a um, – there's a knowledge piece, and then there's the execution part, which we all know he can execute. It's just a matter of uh, learning a new language, I think. And so that might take two days. It might take two weeks. It's kind of up to him and how fast he can pick it up. What's your, travel, what's your travel strategy? What time will you guys get to town generally? And Pretty consistent. We, we, try to get, we try to get into town. We try to arrive at the hotel by about 5. Um, that's sort of consistent process and then guys got time to get dinner and all that and then our meetings will start in the evening but that's sort of the same process um, we keep on the home and away um, it's pretty similar so we'll that that evening schedule stays pretty consistent um, and then the only difference is we're just on a plane as opposed to at home prior to Saturday night at a home game so try to keep it as consistent as possible but get there about five and then meetings usually start right around seven thirty. This team is how many of these variables come together on the field. DeAndre Hopkins is a guy that's played with so many different quarterbacks throughout his career. He knows what it's like to have two guys get on the same page quickly. How have you seen that experience transition into his leadership within your offense of trying to get everybody together? Yeah, I think it's it's the it's the consistency and approach. Uh, it's the communication with everybody involved, particularly with the quarterbacks. Um, and then each other, and then knowing knowing what's being asked of you, and, and I think our quarterbacks do a really good job of uh, understanding intent, you know. And, and receivers, our guys are really in, in tune with all those things too. So, you know, intent of what we're trying to get done, and that way they're always in conversation. If it wasn't what we were um, intending to accomplish, they have the conversation on what where it missed, why didn't it do what we were hoping for. Um, so that's kind of a huge part of it, just a dialogue back and forth. And a guy like Hop, who's who's done it for so many years. Um, with a lot of different guys has really expedited that process because he's very open about what he sees and what he thinks and how he feels about particular things. And so that helps. Um, and I think everyone picks up on that where there's there's no reason to be shy, you know, but communicate as much as humanly possible. And that's the only way you can you can bring together a bunch of new things at, at, at one time is making sure we're over communicating and we're on the same page when it's time to go. Thanks. 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 So Harold, preparing for a quarterback that hasn't played except uh, you know in the NFL making his debut, he's the over one pick. You looking forward to seeing what this defense and this front can do against Caleb Williams on Sunday? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know we're excited. Week one, it's time to roll. Um, but I mean, he's already shown you know what makes him special: his ability to create something out of nothing. Uh, we know we're gonna have our hands full. But at the end of the day, we know it's about us. And if we go out there and we execute the game plan at a high level, we should have high success. You see his ability like to make that baseball turn and extend plays the way he does. How does that change your pass rush perspective? Uh, we just got to make sure we all working together, making sure we're working in, uh, in unison. You know, We can't have nobody out there working as an independent contractor. You know what I'm saying? We just got to work together, which we do well. Um, we've had a lot of snaps together. So you know, we're ready to roll in that aspect cohesion and chemistry with so many new guys on this defense, especially in the secondary? Reps. Uh, reps are pr at practice are critical. And I feel like we've done a good job of of rolling uh, who's ever out there uh, at practice and, uh, and getting the job done, to be honest. I mean, I think, like I've said before, that Denard does a great job making sure that anybody who's out there knows, knows what they need to do and the expectation of our defense. What's it been like for you, I guess, 
seeing so many new faces coming here now, taking the field with, with so many new starters on Sunday? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's crazy, uh, the turnover in the league, but it's exciting because them guys that we've brought in, they're the top of the top. So it's an exciting time, especially defensively uh, with all the key starters that we're going to have. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, it should uh, tend towards a successful season. You have to have a lot of those guys on the field, it, 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 I guess, in a preseason game, I guess, at this point. Like, how excited are you to see them all together? Or how much trepidation do you have since you guys haven't played actual game together? Uh, nah, I mean, I just trust that everybody's putting in the work that they need to put in. You know, everybody's different. Everybody gets ready for games differently. And, you know, I just trust that they've done it, a, they've done it before and they've done it at a high level. So my trust is there with, every, with all the starters on the defense that everybody will be ready to go. You've been here a while, so you're used to people picking against the Titans. Right. Uh, do you use that or no? Because guess what? People are picking against you again. Right. Nah, I mean... It is what it is. To be honest, I, I'm used to it. I just go out there and I do what I got to do. And I think, honestly, like, regardless of what people are saying out there, our confidence level in this building is high because we know we, who we got. And, we, you know, we're ready to take on anybody anywhere, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't really matter what anybody's saying outside the building. Under new faces front, you've seen a lot of teams do really well in, in March on free agency. And those teams generally don't don't have great success. You guys were kind of among the winners in free agency this year. So what do you think will be different for, for you guys as free agency winners in terms of being on the field winners? I think I think we got a lot of players on, on specifically defense. I know offense, we've brought in some guys that are going to light it up out there. But defensively, you know, being in a room with these guys and being in a locker room with them, the sky is the limit for us, I feel like. And I just feel like the confidence level right now in our meetings is high. Expectations are high, and they should be, because I know we got a lot of great players. Um, and we just got to make sure we go out there and back it all up. Is that confidence coming from a specific place right now? And where's it stemming from? It's just stemming from guys know what guys have done out there on the field. And when you see it on film, you just get excited. You know, when you see the potential of everybody, that what they can bring to the table, um, back end, front seven. Once we all get rolling together, I think we could do something special. How much can a team actually set a tone in week one of the season? Oh, you can for sure you can set the tone. Going into Chicago, like, like y'all said, Caleb Williams, um, they got a lot of great players on their side of the ball too. Uh, so it would be a great matchup. But you can set the tone for sure for the season. You go on the road and you start off 1-0, like that's a big deal. And for you, you, you told me, I don't know, a few weeks ago, uh, how good you feel just being healthy, yeah. On that completely in the past and how excited you are for the year. Is this as excited as you can remember personally being for week one and going? Oh, for sure. I mean, because like I said, my personal confidence at all time high from the preparation that I put in. And then you bring in all the new players we got and then all the starters that we have on defense, like the production can be as high as you want it to be, I feel like, in this defense. Um, that being from scheme or and also the players that we've added. So. Like I said, I'm excited to roll and get this thing going. How much has the culture changed this year with a new staff and several new players after the last couple of years haven't gone the way you wanted it? Uh, how has it changed? I feel like it's changed in the sense that I know a lot of guys have said this, but I think it's like real. like. I feel like when guys show up here now, guys feel confident that they can be themselves and that they can operate um, how they know they best operate to perform as good as they can on Sunday because um, everybody's different. I feel like guys are happy that they can come into the building and kind of trust the work that they've been putting in. On this side of the Titans, we're Bill Page. You're the only guy from 2018 who makes you the longest tenure Titan. How, uh, how crazy is it to believe this is year seven and how much do people kid you about that uh, being around here for so long? Yeah, no, I mean, some people, they joke and be like, you know, the old head now or whatever the case may be. But no, I mean, it's crazy because it goes by so fast. And like just yesterday, it just feels like just yesterday I was just like drafted here, I swear. Um, but nah, time flew. Uh, but, you know, like I've said before, I feel like you know, that's a great accomplishment uh, to be the longest tenure Titan on the, on, on the roster. Uh, but there's so many more years, so many more plays to be made and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm really just 
locked in on having the best year I've had since I've been here. How you mentioned being able to trust the work that you put in now. That wasn't the case before, and, and if so. No, nah, I just think that I feel like, you know, the old way was uh, everybody was kind of locked into one way of, like, doing things. But now I feel like the box has been open and there's so many more people involved in uh, the preparation process. And, you know, like for guys who've, who've done it for a while, there's a trust between us and the coaching staff that, you know, everybody has different ways to prepare for the game. And I just feel like now we have that, that trust and that confidence to come into the building and, you know, everybody can kind of not necessarily be locked into one box, but like guys know what they need to do to get ready for Sunday. Watching this defensive line, the defensive front in practice, there's like this group likes to talk. There's a lot of energy in practice every day going against the rookie quarterback in his debut. Do you think there will be an extra emphasis on wanting to talk and try and rattle the rookie a little bit? Uh, I mean, I think guys are going to be who they are. You know what I'm saying? The guys who talk and go out there and make plays, those will be the guys that talk and go make plays. I mean, that's just their personality and who they are, and I don't think it necessarily has to do with, you know, who we're facing. That's just who we are, who guys are. How much did you know about Sweat before he got here, and what have your been impressions to him since he's been here, and how much could he help guys around him if he's, if he's good? Oh, man, the, the sky's the limit for him, I swear. Just watching him, how he's able to move guys with ease, um, I think he – I think he can make some plays for us for sure this year. Um, I didn't really know much about him, to be honest, uh, when he was coming out. But just watching him daily uh, throughout training camp, like I said, the sky's the limit. And obviously, when you got a guy like him and Jeff pushing the pocket, it leads to production for the guys on that edge. You said you've seen wow. some video just from, from USC and from the preseason about Caleb Williams. What is it specifically that you have seen that he does? Uh, I would say just the main thing is that he's a special kid that can go out there and make plays, create something out of nothing. That's what I would say.